Welcome to a very special edition of JTV where we're joined by the author and journalist or undercover journalist, Tuvia Tenenbaum. Um, Tuvia Tenenbaum, uh, what he does is he goes around the world and he uh, he acts as a, as, as a journalist but won't give his real name and he'll sort of he'll go undercover to uh, understand people's real opinions, uh, especially with regard to uh, Jewish people and with regard to Israel. He's uh, one of his... Um, well-established books is uh, Catch the Jew, where he went into uh, the West Bank uh, in, in Israel and uh, he uncovered some, let's just say, some less than pleasant views about uh, uh, Jewish people. Um, and you've also been to Europe. You've, you've, he, he's spoken to uh, uh, NGOs that deal with Israel. And at the moment, I understand you're working on a new book which is, which is exploring the UK and exploring people's views uh, around the UK. Is that focused more on people's, the UK uh, view of Jewish people or just sort of okay. more general? I just want to just, uh, first of all, hello everybody. <laughs> thank you for listening, thank you for watching. It's been a pleasure to be with you. It is a pleasure <laughs> to be with you. Pleasure to be with you, Ali. Thanks for inviting me. Um, I'll just correct a few things. Uh, I am writing for German media. Okay. Mostly, I think for other media, but mostly from German media, and the books that I do, the the, 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 com the publishing companies that commissions those books, is a German company. So they always start with the Germans. They, they are published in different kind of languages, but they start with the German. So I live partly in Germany, partly in the United States. So what I'm doing, I I don't know if you can call it undercover, but I'm just saying to people I am a German journalist, which I am. Right. I don't have to tell them I'm Jewish. I don't tell them I'm Jewish. Mm -hmm. But I don't think any other journalist, either from BBC or for, for uh, uh, the Times or from The Guardian, yeah. goes around and say, Mr. Oli, I'd like to talk to you. My name is John and I am an atheist. Right, right, right. I mean, it's like, it's like I don't have to say that. No, yeah, but yeah. nobody else. So it's like, I don't know why people, oh, he's like, I'm not telling he's a Jewish. Hello, did you tell you you're an atheist or a Christian or a Muslim? It's like, a, it's, it's like senseless. One well, I can't help that. it when people talk to me, I'm wearing a kippah, they know I'm Jewish. Okay, of course, but I'm saying, but normally, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like you can put a hat on the kippah. I mean, it's like, sure, that's true, that's true. You know, but they know, where, even if I'm wearing a cap, they know. They know. Yeah, as well, as <laughs> but no, so you really wouldn't know. Okay. But the point is, this is number one. Yeah. Number one, this is, number two, I don't go to places to find anti-Semitism. Of course. This is not my job mm -hmm. as a journalist, and this is not my job as an author. Mm -hmm. My job is to go to, I mean, in the series of books at least, okay, is to go to a country and, you know, catch the Jews that you mentioned, it's about Israel, it's the Palestinians. And my job is to go to a country, stay there for six, seven months or whatever it is. Usually this is the time period I go, and talk to the people. Mm -hmm. Get into a car, Drive around, yeah. no direction, so you know you can collect the real thing because mm. it's random, like, mm. like, you know, like the surveys are done, mm. and talk to people, mm. and get what the people have. Mm. You know, my job is to get out of you what you think, what you have in your heart, and whatever you have in your heart is what I'm going to go for. Mm. Um, it, it's like, you know, you have a, an iPhone, and you have music, and, and you play, you know, and you just play the music, and whatever mm. music is in your iPhone, you know, or whatever you subscribe to, that's what's going to play. It's not going to play something else, you know. It's not going to play my song, it's going to play your song. Mm. You know, the songs you have chosen, the songs, you know, which is in mm. your library. Mm. So basically what I'm doing, I'm going to your iPhone, to your art, and I press play. Mm. And whatever is there, comes out. And what do you say, what, what do you... So, sadly, yeah. let me just finish the answer. Sadly, most often, you know, in the places I have been to, so far, um, the things that came out was the Jew. This arable creature of our day and time, the Jew. And so, if this is what you have on your mind, I'm going to talk to you about it. Mm. Now, in Catch the Jew, for example, I mean, I left, I was born in Israel. I left Israel 33 years before that, you know, it was, there were two tribes. There, the Arab and the Jew. When I came back, all this time later, I found a third tribe. Mm -hmm. That's the European. Mm -hmm. the, the, the NGOs, all those NGOs, and all those Europeans are supposed to be there to make peace, 
12 piece to make the Arab and the Jew together, whatever it is, whatever they say. Yeah. You know, but when I went there as a German, you know, German journalist, and I joined them, and I found a different story, mm. a totally different story. What helped me join them, I became very friendly with some Palestinian leaders, especially Jibril Rajoub, you know, who is uh, one of the top, top, top leaders of the Palestinians. We became really, really good friends. Yeah. He didn't know who he was. I mean, what he knew, his name is German journalist, and I am. Okay, and I gave him my name as Tobias, which is the German for Tuvia, by the way. It's not, it's not that far. Right. And we became very good friends, and I was traveling all over with Palestinian security, and then to make sure that the, the Jews don't kill me. It was, it was a fascinating ride, you know. And of course, in the way, I meet all these Europeans, and they see me together with the Palestinians, and they say, this guy is kosher. <laughs> this is a good German. We can talk to him. Right. And they talked to me. Mm. And they told me what they think. Mm. And it was anti-Semitism from A to Z. But what do you say, if someone said to you, you know what, you've, you've, you've seen incidents of anti-Semitism, but to therefore say that because you've, ex you know, does, does anecdote equal this is widespread? So when people say that, it's the people who don't like the results. <laughs> like here in Britain, I mean, I'm not British, I'm not taking sides, but as an outsider, there was a vote, there was a referendum, yeah. which was made by the government, which the parliament sanctioned, and the result came out to be something that they didn't want, leave, leave the EU. Now they come with all kinds of excuses that the leave is not leave, the people really didn't know, the people have been lied to, as if it's the first time in history that politicians have been lying to people, as if they have not been lying to people all their lives. I mean, this is the job of a politician to yeah. lie. You know, the Remainers lie, the Leavers lie, everybody's lying anyway. Yeah. You know, so all oh, the excuses became patronizing that. You know, it's not, you know, democratically, if we really believe in democracy, we should not abide by the people's vote. Or we can make it another thing. We say we need another referendum, and we call it people's vote, because the first vote was a vote by cats and rats, <laughs> not people. <laughs> That's the way it works. Yeah. The same thing with the anecdotes. I mean, but that, but I just second, I study mathematics. Brexit was a poll. There was a poll with Brexit. Just a second, just a second. There was, there was. I studied mathematics. One of my majors in mathematics, mm. you know, in college. My major was mathematics and computer science, and and of course, statistics is part part of it. Mm. I know statistics. I know how to do these kind of things. Mm. It's not a big secret. You don't go to a place and you see somebody t doing something and then you see everybody else is doing it. You know, this is of course just an anecdote. Yeah. What you do is you go from place to place, you spend months traveling a country and you talk to God knows how many people. And then in the book you have to condense it. You can put everybody there because otherwise your book will be like volumes. Mm. And you look what's more common thing you had. Mm. And because you do it randomly, because I, I'm here today and I don't know where I'll be tomorrow doing my travels, it's random. Yeah. If you say something to me, go to Newcastle, I'll go to Newcastle because just you told me, you know. Not because I felt any reason to go to Newcastle, mm. you know. And then somebody says, oh, it's such a beautiful place called Shrewsbury. Okay, go to Shrewsbury. Mm. <laughs> you know, whatever it is, you know. I go. I let the people guide me. And then I talk to the people. I stop the car. Get off and talk to people. Mm. I say, Ollie, what's in your mind? And then you tell me. Mm. So it's not anecdotes. If the anecdotes are here and there and there, that's what you call statistics. And that's how we do statistics. That's how you do surveys. That's how you do polling. You talk to hundreds of people in a country, you know. It depends. Every country is different, you know. But how do we know, we do polling before election, what the mm. people will vote? And most of the time, mm. not always, of course, it's going to be more or less similar. Can you tell us some of the most, I mean, we'll, we'll get on to the UK in a, in a moment, yeah. but with regard to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, um, what are some of the most shocking things that you heard people say? The most, I mean, there are so many of them. There are so many of them. But one of the interesting things from you are the Europeans, that they, they really came flying thousands of miles to satisfy one need in them. It's the hatred of a Jew, the hate of a Jew. That's what it is. They are going, doing all this. 
you know, spending money, raising money, whatever it is, for one stupid reason. You know, their grandfather did not kill all the Jews enough you know, in Europe. Now let's go fly there to the Middle East and get a Jew. That's the only reason they are there, to mm. catch a Jew. Mm. You, you have organizations like, like uh, I quote, for example, I quote uh, Doctors Without Borders. This is, my, I always respected that organization. I respected an organization of people, respected people who studied medicine. It's not easy. You spend years and years and years studying medicine. Mm. And then finally, you get it. Mm. You can practice medicine. Mm. After all those years invested, all those money, all this time, you know, sleepless nights, you are a doctor. Yeah. And then what do you do? You fly to Israel. It's like to al -Tanidi. So I caught them. I came there. I didn't know you were there, you know. And I, sp I saw them there in a, in a, in a, in a, with the Bedouins. They tried to convince the Bedouins that they suffer from some unique disease created by the Israeli authorities, which is bound to kill them. So try to convince them that they are sick. Mm -hmm. It's like, what are you doing? Yeah. What in God's name are you doing? Yeah. So and it's like, and I said, what are you doing? And we started filming this. And they got so upset that people who are believing in freedom of speech and freedom of people, people, people they came to me with their, with their iPhones or whatever, the smartphones, took pictures of me like I'm a criminal, boom, boom, boom. I said, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Everything should be trans transparent. You're an NGO. You cannot operate in the dark, I'm sorry. And why are you upset? They run out. And I have so many stories like this. And when you, when you release Catch the Jew, were you not worried? You might, you're, you know, you might, did you not feel a bit threatened that perhaps some people who thought you were something, you ended no, up being something else? No, this is the only thing I, I, you know, I think about before doing a book like this, because I know the way I do it. You know, I talk to the average person also, not just at the top. Yeah. And, and I ask usually two stupid questions, that's when you get the, the real answer. Yeah. So the only thing I care of doing is to record everything. So my only fear all the time is like if you publish a book like this, you know, and you cannot back it up with evidence. That's what worries me. Yeah. So I make sure everything is recorded. Yeah. For example, I had a top investigator of B'Tselem. It's, it's an Israeli Jewish organization. And their job is to help the Palestinians. And they are financed by many groups, especially Germans. And they are anti-Israel, Israelis, kind of, you know, far left, or whatever, you, if, you, if you want to call it like this. And they have this investigative unit made of 10, 11 people, depends. All of them are Palestinians. And I joined the top investigator. And the top investigator told me, a Palestinian, from Janine, he told me, as the TV was running, as the TV, as the cameras of the video was running, he said to me, that the Holocaust never happened. It's a lie, period. You know, I put it out. Of course, the first thing that Salem does is say that I'm lying. You know, so the Israeli TV put it up. They say the Israeli TV edited it. Mm. And then I put out in Facebook the raw material. At that point, but Salem has no choice, say, okay, he said it. <laughs> <laughs> so my, that's my fear, always. You know, it's like, will people believe what I find? So, so I always make sure that things are recorded. You know, do, do you believe recorded and filmed. And if, if a fear now, to answer your question, a fear of what happens. When I am there, for example, I know, part of me at least knows, that if they know that I'm Jewish, and on top of that, Israeli pass I have also Israeli passport, not just an American passport. I would be dead. There is no question in my mind. I know what they think, because I have been there with them. But at the time, I don't think about it. At the time, you cannot. At the time, I'm focused on getting whatever the information, getting what the people think. That's what I want to know. Yeah. And at the time, I can be even jovial. I mean, can be happy, like dancing and going around, you know. Do you think peace has a chance? No. Why? 
can't minds be changed? You know, surely not everyone thinks the way that you know you've experienced. No, most people who think peace has a chance are people who don't know anything about what happens on the other side. They don't know Arabic. They don't know the mindset. They don't understand it. And I don't say it in a way of putting down the Muslims or the, the Palestinians. I understand them. I understand their perspective. And I admire something that they have that the Israelis and the Jews don't have. A huge pride in their culture. And saying openly what they think in many ways. You know, they want Jerusalem. They want this, they want that. You know, the Jews never say anything. Yeah. Up to now, the Jews don't say what well, they want a border. They tell you. If this is what they want, it doesn't matter. But they say something. And they walk around the streets, I am Palestinian, I am part of it. Show me how many Israelis do it, unless you're like extremists from some settlement, you know, or people with young workers, you know. Show me other people, Jews, who are going around, yeah, I am a Jew, baby, and I love it. They do that. So, and what do they think? They think that the Jew has no business being there. They don't want a Jew there no matter what. They want the Jew out. Go to where you come from. And their argument is very simple. We didn't, before Hitler, most of you were not here. We didn't kill you. We didn't put you in those ovens in the crematoriums. Why should we pay the price for what the Germans did to you? It's a, it's, a, it's a very plain argument. Yeah. So you can come and say, you know, Israel is, is historical and Israel is this and we have a right. I'm all with you. Mm. But from their perspective, Muslims, what do you mean? It says in the Bible, it's like, what? So what? Historical? <laughs> Let the Indians take back America. Yeah. I mean, from their perspective, I understand it. Mm. This is their perspective. What we don't see is like, even if everything the Palestinians say about Israel is true, even if the way they say Israel was funded was like criminal or whatever, show me one country that did not happen like this. How was America funded? Mm. Can we talk about the history yeah, but two of Britain? Can, 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 no. can we talk about the history of Britain? <laughs> the United Kingdom. Hello. Hello. Can we talk about the history of any country? It doesn't mean two wrongs not make right. In the world, the way it works is this. Might makes right. I'm sorry, that's the way it is. If you conquer a country, that country is yours. That's what it is. That's, how, that's why Hawaii is part of the United States. Hawaii should have never been part of the United States. Never. It is, because America conquered it. Mm -hmm. That's the history of the world. Mm -hmm. So everybody who preaches to Israel, Let's say even, minus the Palestinians, look at your history. Right. Look at your history. If, but Israel if, isn't even, doesn't like, even uh, get established like that. It wasn't, the, the, case. I'm it saying, was, it I'm wasn't saying, the case of cultural I am just saying, I know the United Nations yeah. Revolution, and I'm saying, even, I, I just, just want to You're say. You're saying even if it was like that. Even if it was like that. Let's yeah. say that everything you said about Israel, these Arab Jews, let's say there was no UN resolution, let's say the mandate, and let's say that Palestine existed before, which is a lie. Right. We all know that. They say that Palestine existed, this is what you told me, 14,000 years ago. Okay. <laughs> let's say it's true. I know it's not. But let's say it's true. Let's say that there was a kingdom of Palestine. Very successful kingdom. <laughs> and the Palestinian culture goes back thousands of years. And then the Jews came for no reason, and they conquered it. Even if that is the case, which is, not, of course it's not. But even if that's the case, I know that's, that's the way you do it everywhere mm. in the world. Mm. There is no country that was established differently except Ireland because it was done by fairies who yeah. were there before. Yeah. <laughs> no human beings yeah. before the Irish people came. That's the only country in the world. <laughs> but otherwise, that's what it is. So all these beautiful people who talk about their preaching to Israel, mm. all these Europeans, go to your country and preach your country. Mm. Why don't you preach to your country? But they are so much into that. Like I went to, again, it's like, you know, it's the place, and there is a guy, you know, mm. in, in the Negev, you know, in, in, and, and he sings 
um, they tried to establish a settlement there, the Israelis took it off, and he was singing, you know, his name is Aziz, and he was singing to me about what happened before the Jews came, that the place was with many trees, fruit trees and everything was there, and then the Jews came and they uprooted the, the, the trees and they did this, and I said to him, yeah, Aziz, are you out of your mind? We are in the desert. There was no trees here ever. From the time of the first King Muhammad, there was no trees. What are you talking about trees? Yeah. And I said, so, 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 wait a second, Aziz, you hardly speak English. And all of a sudden you, you sing a song and it rhymes, you have the lyrics. And he said to me, it's not my song. They taught me the Europeans. <laughs> the Europeans come and they teach them their history. Yeah. Yeah. And what do Europeans know? They come from, from London and they come from, from, from Berlin, you know, and they come from Sweden or whatever. In their places, there are trees. <laughs> okay, Tavia, there's hundreds of questions that I'd like to okay. ask you about, but we are limited okay. on time. So we'll have to do part two when you're next uh, available. Inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. To stay up to date with JTV content, Click subscribe here if you're on YouTube and hit the alarm bell. And if you're on Facebook, hit the like button and under following, click see first. If you enjoy watching JTV content and want to help us continue to grow, please consider making a donation to us by clicking here.